Welcome to our tutorial about setting up Cubase for working with MIDI. In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to configure Cubase to receive your MIDI signal. And this means telling Cubase which MIDI devices and interfaces to use. First of all, be sure that you've connected your MIDI device, like your keyboard, to your MIDI interface. For example, the MIDI ports on your audio hardware. Make sure you've done this properly, as we discussed in our previous lesson, and that they're powered up before you launch Cubase. You configure MIDI port setup in the Device Setup dialog window. Go to MIDI port setup on the Devices tree. When you change MIDI port settings from this window, they are applied automatically through the program. If your MIDI interface appears here, that means Cubase has scanned and successfully recognized the MIDI interface. I see the in and out status, the port system name, and how it'll display in my input-output channel selections. Let's scroll to the right of this window. You can disable MIDI ports by unchecking the visible box. You can also rename your MIDI ports in the Show As column. Just click on the port in this column and type in your new name. Press Enter when you're done. Let's rename the MIDI out port as well. Now if you don't see your MIDI interface in this list, that means Cubase can't see it either. So be sure your drivers are properly installed on your system and that the interface is powered up. Be sure you've made your connections also with the power off. When you record MIDI, you specify which input the track should use, or you can select the In All Inputs option for an input port. It's located right here. If you check this option, it means any MIDI data from any MIDI input will be recorded, and this is good enough for most uh, home studio musicians. The In All Inputs option on the MIDI Port Setup page lets you choose which inputs to include, and this is handy if your system shows numerous instances of the same physical MIDI input. One caveat, if you have a MIDI Remote Control Unit connected, deactivate the In All Inputs option for that input so that you don't accidentally record data from the remote control. Let's close the device setup window. Click OK to accept our modifications. Under the File menu, that's Cubase on a Macintosh, let's scroll down to Preferences. The Preferences dialog window opens. Let's scroll down to MIDI. There's an option at the top here, MIDI Through Active. Generally, this should be activated. You also need to set your instrument to local control off, and you'll need to see your instrument's operating manual for details about how to do this. Basically, if local control is on, the keys you press are played by the synth brain of your module. And if it's off, that means the MIDI signal from the keyboard will be recorded in Cubase, and at the same time rerouted back to your keyboard so that you can hear what you're playing. In other words, the MIDI data is immediately echoed back out. If you aren't able to set your instrument to local off, then you should deactivate MIDI through in Cubase. MIDI through will be active for MIDI tracks that are record enabled and or have the monitor button activated. If you use a separate MIDI controller that doesn't actually make sounds itself, then you don't need to worry about this option. Just keep MIDI through active. And this concludes our lesson about configuring MIDI port setup within Cubase. We are now ready to work on our first project, and in our next lesson we'll be creating a project and setting it up for audio recording.